a massive skyscraper shakes. Bitcoin prices plummet, and China expands its nuclear arsenal. That and more on this week's China News Headline. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell, and these are this week's China News Headlines. The Chinese Communist Party has prided itself on how it's transformed China into a land of glittery skyscrapers. Problem is, all those skyscrapers are made in China. This video shows people in Shenzhen fleeing in panic as a skyscraper almost a thousand feet tall starts wobbling and swaying even though there was no earthquake or bad weather. People inside the building were evacuated, and an investigation is ongoing into why a giant skyscraper just randomly started wobbling. But experts found no safety abnormalities in the main structure and surrounding environment of the building, other than the fact the building wobbles. These have been a bad couple of weeks for the public image of Chinese construction. Last week, a man was left dangling from one of China's infamous glass bridges after the glass shattered in strong wind. There's a big problem in China of construction corruption. Officials or contractors often siphon money from construction during each phase of the project. So the end result can be dangerously unstable buildings. It's such a common problem, Chinese people have a name for it. Tofu dreg construction, because it's like the buildings are made of the scraps left behind from making tofu. That's right, not even tofu, tofu scraps. So in a way, it's appropriate that a Titanic replica is now under construction in China. If that falls apart, it's just being historically accurate. Speaking of things collapsing, the price of Bitcoin. We partly have a Chinese government crackdown to thank. Chinese authorities said the crypto market was too volatile, so restricted trading, which caused a volatile drop in the price of crypto, including Bitcoin. But if you've lost a bunch of money, don't worry, China is helping out with over half a million dollars in counterfeit currency. This is one of the tactics of the Chinese Communist Party's economic warfare against the US. China is flooding the U.S. with fake goods. In 2019, Customs and Border Patrol made almost 28,000 seizures. Those goods would have been worth $1.5 billion if they were genuine. And almost half of those fake goods came from China. So considering the economic warfare China is waging against the U.S., you'll probably be wanting to invest in Chinese stocks with ties to the Chinese military. Well, fear not, a Trump-era ban on doing just that has been postponed. But you'd better move quick. You only have until June 11th. Bye now! A former American university professor has been sentenced to 37 months in prison for lying on grant applications. He was trying to get millions of dollars in federal grant money to do research in China. As part of his sentence, he was also ordered to pay more than $3.4 million in restitution to the National Institute of Health and approximately $413,000 to The Ohio State University. If he's having a hard time raising the money, maybe he could invest in Dogecoin. And after the break, the U.S. may be falling behind China on science, but there's a plan to change that. Welcome back. Some fear the U.S. is falling behind China in the sciences. So the Senate is considering a $120 billion investment to counter China. It's a bipartisan bill. It's led by Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Republican Senator Todd Young. You see, the U.S. kind of realized the problem of having China dominate things like the medical equipment supply chain when the coronavirus hit. China is rapidly expanding its nuclear weapons arsenal. That's a concern for the U.S. and Russia, who have a regular nuclear dialogue to make sure things don't go Duke Nukem. However, China doesn't seem to be willing to join these nuclear arms talks. According to U.S. disarmament ambassador Robert Wood, despite the PRC's dramatic buildup of its nuclear arsenal, 
Unfortunately, it continues to resist discussing nuclear risk reduction bilaterally with the United States. But as world-ending catastrophes go, China is willing to work with the U.S. on climate change. You know, working to fight climate change can actually be good for business, especially the business of ethnic slave labor. A new report this week found China is using Uyghur forced labor to make parts for solar panels. And China makes about 70% of the world's solar panels. The Chinese Communist Party has been in propaganda overdrive to cover up their genocide of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. I talked about that in a previous episode. One of the party's propaganda tools is releasing videos from Uyghurs. Chinese state media have published dozens of the videos praising the Communist Party and showing Uyghurs angrily denouncing former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for declaring a genocide in the far west Xinjiang region. The party has been claiming that people made these videos totally spontaneously, out of their own free will, because they're just so, so angry at Mike Pompeo. But in a very shocking twist, it turns out the Chinese regime ordered Uyghurs to make these videos. The Associated Press obtained a screenshot of a text message sent to government officials in Xinjiang, telling them to find Uyghurs to make these videos. And the text even spelled out what these Uyghurs should say in their totally spontaneous videos. They express a clear position on Pompeo's remarks. For example, I firmly oppose Pompeo's anti-Chinese remarks, and I'm very angry about them. Express your feelings of loving the party, the country, and Xinjiang. I am Chinese. I love my motherland. I am happy at work and in life. And so on. Very convincing. You know, after years of bending Hollywood to its will, you'd think the Communist Party could get better screenwriters. Unfortunately, the man who leaked this government text to the AP has now been detained for instigating splitism. At least until he makes a video about how much he loves the Chinese Communist Party. Totally spontaneously and out of his own free will, of course. The genocide of Uyghur Muslims in China is part of the reason why there's a growing call for a boycott of the 2022 Beijing Olympic Games. This week, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi joined that call. Specifically, she's calling for a diplomatic boycott. That's where individual athletes would be allowed to go and compete, but U.S. officials would not attend the Games. And there's a new job in China. Organ donation coordinators. You see, China has been rapidly expanding its organ transplant industry. Lots of money to be made there. Most of those organs come from religious and ethnic minorities, like Falun Gong practitioners, or Uyghur Muslims who are killed for their organs. China didn't have any voluntary organ donation system until 2011. Unless you count the system where the party volunteered Uyghurs and Falun Gong. But even after the party started a separate system for people to actually voluntarily donate their organs, not many people used it. So that's where organ donation coordinators come in. Their role is to convince families of dying patients to agree to donate their loved ones' organs. Except, according to a former organ donation coordinator, that usually means screwing poor people. He recounted one case involving a very poor family. Their dying family member could still have been saved with proper medical treatment. But the family decided not to proceed with this. Instead, they chose to starve him and cash out. Yeah, don't get an organ transplant in China. And a Chinese propaganda ploy in Turkey backfired badly. China hosted a drawing contest for high schoolers called China in My Dreams. Students were supposed to submit artwork that best describes the ties between China and Turkey. And boy, did they ever. Here are some examples. Xi Jinping surrounded by Uyghurs' skulls. And another that shows a man dressed in clothing made of the PRC flag, putting his hand over a Uyghur's mouth, expressing the idea that Uyghurs have no freedom of speech. Yet other social media users have shared drawings on various themes. Uyghurs hanged by noose made from China's flag. Uyghurs who were killed by a sword while China and Turkey carried on their friendship. And the Chinese state representatives demolishing mosques, imprisoning Uyghurs. I so love it when the Communist Party's propaganda initiatives blow up in their face. 
And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support us and our efforts to expose the truth about the Chinese Communist Party. On the crowdfunding website, Patreon. Nikolay asks, Chris, in case of a war, what do you think will happen with U.S. companies that pander to CCP, like YouTube and Twitter? Well, Nikolay, I'd hate to see an actual boots-on-the-ground war between the U.S. and China, but if something like that were to happen, many Western companies, not just the tech companies like YouTube and Twitter, would be screwed. In fact, one of the first things the Communist Party would do is to seize the factories and assets of any American companies that are still operating inside China. Right now, these companies think the China market means big business and big bucks. Of course, it never works out that way. But if the American public decided they wouldn't give their business to companies with ties to China, those companies would change how they do things. And the great news is, it doesn't need to take a war for that to happen. Right now, you can start buying from competitors who don't invest in China or boycott companies that turn a blind eye to the Chinese Communist Party. Hit them where it hurts, in the wallet. Thanks for your question, Nicolay, and your support. And a big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. We could not do this show without you. So thank you for joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world. If you're interested in joining, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to have me answer your question on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.